I just hit $10,000 worth of sales on Comp C. And with so many of the questions you've been asking me about the ins and outs of using the platform, I decided I would make this tutorial video to show you exactly what I've been doing to go from zero in sales all the way up to 10,000 in about nine months. So by the end, you'll have some technical knowledge about how to use Comp C, but more importantly, you'll have the exact mindset and uh, strategies to go about finding deals so you can make $10,000 in sales in a fraction of the time it took me. I'll also show you why I really believe it is vital to look at the sales history of a specific card rather than just buying whatever cards based on what you think that player is going to do in the next couple months. So if you're ready for a deep dive into Comp C, then welcome back. Now let's get to work. First things first, if you have no idea what Comp C is, I have other videos on what the platform is about, but essentially it is just a business that will list cards for you. And they'll also house it in their warehouse. So you could actually just send out thousands of cards to them. They'll take pictures of them, put it in their system and list it for you. And you can buy and sell electronically and not actually have to send out each card or receive each card. If you wanted to get a thousand cards sent to you, you could do it all in one shipment, but it just takes away a lot of those pain points of dealing with battling scotch tape and going to the post office a million times and allows you just to focus on sports cards and finding deals. But more importantly for me, Comp C is a classroom. It is where I've been able to learn so much about this hobby because they have information on pretty much every card in existence. So you could look through the website, you can compare and contrast all these different cards. And I see it more of like a, a training ground, like a simulation, like in those X-Men movies, before they got to face the Sentinels in real life, they had to go through the simulation that Charles Xavier put them through so that they would be ready. And I see Comp C as that training ground while eBay would be the Sentinel. So the first thing to do is to go to CompC.com and create your free account. I'm not gonna go through that process because if you don't know how to create a free account on a website in 2020, then uh, this is just gonna be too difficult for you. The next step is to buy store credit, and you don't have to buy a lot, maybe just 10 or $20 at first, but a couple things to notice is that when you pay for your store credit, you will be taxed, and that way, when you buy cards on the website, you won't be taxed for the cards because you're already prepaying that tax. Also, if you have a sales tax exempt certificate, Comp C does take it. That way you won't get charged tax because you have a business and you'll be using these cards as inventory. I have another video on that, so check it out there. Just know that they do accept it. At first, you could just add 10 or $20 because it's not important that you are buying cards on Comp C. What's important is that you have access to their sales history, which really shows you which cards and which parallels are selling for more and have a lot more sales volume behind it and that way when you're new and every hippy dippy tie-dye rainbow vomit looking parallel catches your eye you'll know which ones to avoid and which ones are actually worth buying now I got to mention if you are just collecting cards for yourself pay whatever you want there are no rules as long as you can afford it go for it but if you are investing and you want to ensure you're paying a good price for a card and getting a card that has solid sales history behind it so you know you'll be able to move it then you definitely need to rely on some sort of data now that you have your store credit bought head on over to your dashboard and you'll see that there are a lot of different options here I'm not gonna go over all of it because for one, I don't use all of it, but two, I'd rather show you how to find deals and spot opportunities than just go over the technical stuff. So here are just a few tabs and, or a few little buttons that you'll wanna take notice of. The first one is purchase history, and this will just show you all the cards you have bought on Comp C. Next one is request shipment. And this is important because at some point, you'll probably want to receive some of the cards you have bought in person, which means you'll have to have Comp C send them to you. Now, because of COVID, they've been shut down, the hobby has exploded, so shipment times have been delayed by months and months, which is pretty dangerous because if you are investing in a player that is uh, that could go on a pretty wild streak and those cards are tied up, 
uh, you know, in the middle of a shipment, that means that you can't sell them when that card peaks in price. So I personally have not requested a shipment yet. That's something I will do when shipping times become a bit shorter. But for now, I'd rather keep the cards available on Comp C and be able to flip them that way uh, rather than have them tied up and uh, miss my window of opportunity to sell at a high price. Now under the sellers tab, you'll see the first option is auction history. And this is pretty cool because you can actually submit the cards that you have on Comp C to be auctioned off that will not only appear on Comp C, but will also go on to eBay. And they do charge a, a higher percentage and a couple extra dollars uh, for you to do this. But what I've noticed is that a lot of the auctions on Comp C that go over to eBay will actually end at a higher price than buying that exact card in the same condition just on Comp C. And I think the reason is because a lot of the cards listed on Comp C also are listed on eBay, but at a higher price. So if you're on eBay looking at one of these auctions, you might think you're getting a deal because it's less than a buy it now card on eBay that is through Comp C. However, if you just go on compc.com and you're buying that same card, it would be cheaper. I know that's really confusing. Just know that if you are buying cards on compc.com, it is cheaper than buying the same exact card on ebay.com via Comp C. Don't worry, you'll figure it out. The next tab to go over is start new submission. And this is if you wanna send Comp C your cards. And I've sent them about 1,500 cards so far, but there are a few things to really uh, take into consideration before you do this. Now, the first consideration are the fees. And sending cards to Comp C will cost between 35 cents all the way up to a dollar or more. If it's a current year card, it'll be 35 cents. If it's a random card, probably 50 cents. And then if you want it in the system quicker, it'll be a dollar. And then also if you have PSA graded cards or cards that are worth more than hundred bucks, there are a couple extra fees attached to that as well. Also, you're gonna want to ignore the dates it says on the website. Three week guarantee is just a name. It's like that uh, auto mechanic shop in the ghetto that calls themselves Beverly Hills Auto Repair, even though there's like drive-by shootings next door. It's just a name at this point because that was what it was before COVID, when they had staff, before the hobby exploded. But I sent in cards in July that didn't hit their system until the end of October. So you can check on their homepage for a link to their blog where it will go over an update of their backlog and where they're at. But the dates are just super backed up. So don't even take that into consideration. Now, if you're considering sending cards into Comp C, also remember that you're gonna be charged 5% of the sale price. And so if you're paying money for them to list it and you're paying that 5% and you're paying the shipping for the card to go there, make sure it's a card that can actually sell. Because if you're sending in a third year uh, CJ McCollum base card, it's probably never gonna sell. And if it does, what, what's it gonna sell for? Like, 50 cents and that's going to be the same price that you pay for them to get the card. So for me, the sweet spot is $4 up to 25, where if it's a four or $5 card, it's not worth me listing on eBay because it's just such a pain and I hate that kind of work. I'd rather them do it, but I also know that it's desirable enough that it'll eventually sell. And if I could turn 50 cents or a dollar into four with them doing the work, I might as well have them do it. And above $25, that's also when I start thinking, is it worth me selling on my own on eBay versus all the time it's gonna take getting to their system and then them selling it and then charging their fees. So four to 25 is just where I like it at this point. If you have rookie cards of active players, make sure to check out Starstock because they specialize in these cards and they offer a lot quicker upload times and a fraction of the fees. Now, there's a very important hidden link on Comp C that'll take you to an amazing page filled with deals. It's pretty crazy, but no one really talks about it. What you wanna do is you wanna click right around here and I'm just messing with you. There's no hidden links, just patience and research. Now the last two tabs I wanna cover are redeem store credit and cash out store credit. And one of the biggest complaints I hear about Comp C is their fee to take cash out of the system. Uh, if you have $1,000 in there and you'd like to transfer it to your bank account, 
you'll only get 900 or 90% of that amount. That's a legit pain point, and the way I see of going around it is just to scale up and have cards sent to you. So while I flip all of these lower end cards, the goal is to put that towards higher end cards as I learn more and more about the hobby. So that means I can have a handful of very high end cards sent to me and not have to pay 10% for nothing. You could also choose to redeem your store credit through blowout cards. Uh, and you'll get a bit better of a conversion that way. And so if you check out how much you would get, a $1,000 store credit on blowout would cost you $1,070 on Comp C. However, if you wanted to get that $1,070 in cash, you would only get back $963 after Comp C takes their 10% fee. Personally, I haven't used the store credit on blowout just because I don't buy sealed wax. And the conversion is, decent, but it's nothing amazing. So for me, it just makes more sense to have cards sent to me and avoid fees altogether. Now let's focus on how to use Comp C to get familiar with sets and to spot deals. And what I love about the platform is how organized it is and how many filters they offer. So it's very easy to compare and contrast cards right next to each other without opening all these different tabs. And uh, I, I kind of think of it like walking into a library, like a massive library, but not nearly as boring or smelly. So here are a few ways I use it now to find deals to flip directly on Comp C. And the first one is search by player. I'll literally put a player's name in the search bar and see all of the cards presented to me. But on the top right, I'll make sure to either sort by highest percentage off or biggest discount. But highest percentage off, I like even more. And that's because if there is a card that is $300 off, but it's a $2,000 card, that's a pretty low percentage. However, if there's a $100 card that is selling for 25 bucks, I know that that's a better use of that $25 investment. So when I sort by that, I'll get to see which cards are currently on sale uh, at the highest or the, the steepest amount. And then from there, I can go on the left and make sure it's in their pro jersey. It's uh, their rookie year if I want that. Maybe it's serial numbered, uh, it's ungraded. I can go through all that and really filter it down to see which cards are the most desirable, which ones have the most amount of sales volume, but are also on the steepest discount. Because I don't want a card that is uh, supposedly very cheap at this moment, but it's a rare card that people don't really like, or it, it's like a fourth year card that it might take another year or two to sell. So my goal is always to find the steepest discount with the highest sales volume. To do this, I'll go over the cards that intrigue me and then click on their sales history and just see how many of that card has sold in the last quarter, in the last couple quarters, over the last uh, few years and just get an idea, is this a card that sells frequently or is this a card that only sold a lot of in that current year, but now everyone's forgotten about it. I'll look at what the highest price was and when that was. And a lot of cards peaked in August and at least it gives me an idea of, okay, it has gone up to this price at a, a certain time. And from there, I'll look to see at everyone that's selling the cards. What I really like to find is when there is a seller selling a card for a price that is low enough that if I were to buy it and mark it up 50%, it would still be one of the most affordable options of that card uh, in the same condition. And on Comp C, you gotta check the condition, gotta make sure that you are comparing apples to apples in terms of sharp corners, nice centering, uh, no dimples or anything like that. Now, the cheaper the card, the bigger the return I would like. So if I buy a card for $3, I'd like to at least double my money to six, but maybe nine bucks. If it's a more expensive card, like a 50 or $70 card, then I'd be happy with just a 50% return. I go over that in another video, but just know that uh, every card is unique and you also have to go in with the mentality of, this is the supply at this moment. There could be five sellers, there could be 20 sellers, there could be 100 sellers, but understand that that is not stopping anyone else from sending that card into Comp C. And there's also a chance that people have more of that card, but not listed for sale. So if you're only buying that card because you're the that, that's the only one and you wanna be uh, having a monopoly over it, just understand that that could be very temporary. Someone else could have that same exact card in their inventory, but not yet listed for sale. And then all of a sudden, they list theirs for sale a dollar less than what you list yours. So always keep that in mind. 
That's why I really like learning about the different supply and demand dynamics on Comp C, because if you could learn these lessons with five and $10 cards, it's gonna save you a whole lot of time and painful lessons than if you were to learn this on a thousand dollar card and, and thinking you have the only one on eBay or very few of these cards exist, but then you realize, oh crap, I overpaid and now there's 50 sellers that are willing to get rid of this card at half the price I paid. Another way I like to look for deals is to compare players in a given set. And I did this with 2012, 2013 select a couple months ago. I saw how 20, 12 Prism had blown up and I always thought 2012 Select was underrated and undervalued in comparison. So I would look up all these 2012 Select cards and I saw that Steph Curry cards were selling for like 30 to $40, but Kevin Durant's, his cards were only like 10 or 12 bucks. And so when you could look at a whole class of players, whether they're veterans or they're rookies, and gauge the differences, the disparities, you could really start to find some undervalued guys. I did the same thing back in March with the 2012-13 rookie class, which of course has Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler. It was a great class. And I went to the hoops cards of 2012-2013 and saw that Kawhi Leonard's and Anthony Davis cards were like five or six times higher than Damian Lillard and Kyrie Irving. And I was buying Damian Lillard rookie cards for like three or four dollars, uh, his hoops rookie card. And I know that he wasn't on a playoff team or wasn't supposed to be on a playoff team, but I knew that he was such a good player that he shouldn't be at three or four dollars for a hoops card if Anthony Davis is at 30 bucks. Another way to use Comp C is to find rare and unique cards on that platform that you could buy elsewhere that you wouldn't have even thought to look for or know how to discover on your own. And the best example of that was when I was looking at the different rookies of that 2012-2013 class. And if you don't know this, that was the year Panini really took over and introduced all these sets in the NBA. So I was looking at Brilliance cards and hoops and uh, marquee, but there was one set that really stuck out and that was Crusade. And Crusade in 2012-2013 had a white card with these angel wings which for the rookies and a lot of the veteran players, it didn't really do much. But I remember sifting through all the players and looking down and there was one player that really stuck out to me so much so that it's become one of my favorite cards. And that is the 2012-13 Crusade Kobe Bryant. And when you think of his tragic death and you think of all the murals around the, the country and around the world of him, uh, he has those angel wings in a lot of those murals. And so this card really reminded me of those murals. And uh, I ended up buying about 10 to 15 of those cards. I tried scooping up as many of them as possible on eBay and on Beckett. Uh, and now they've gone up in price and I've even gotten a few of them graded. But the point is that I wouldn't have gone out and found that card because I don't know how I would have searched for that card on eBay or somewhere else. But because of Comp C's design, it was very easy to go from one set to another and compare and contrast all the cards right there on the same page. A couple other really cool cards I found was this Michael Jordan and Spike Lee uh, Nike campaign card that I thought was just super cool. There's this Ken Griffey groovy 70s cartoon card. Uh, there's a Shaquille O'Neal Kazam card from the, the movie he did back in the 90s. And I even found uh, cards on some of my favorite TV shows as a kid, including Family Matters and Full House. And of course, one of my favorite actors of all time. Yep, Uncle Jesse himself, John Stamos. Also with buying on Comp C, you can pay full price or you could put in an offer. And what I like about the offers is that they expire within three days. So it encourages you to put in a, a valid offer, not just a low ball offer, because if it just lingered on for weeks or months, then I would put in a very low offer, knowing that I'd probably forget about it, and then that player could get injured, could get traded, a lot of things can happen, but I wouldn't wanna to have to keep tabs on all my offers, so it's very nice that it's just, it's three days only, more than likely nothing gonna happen within those three days, and then you could also uh, cancel the offers at any time. What I typically do is I put in an offer around 80 to 90% of the asking price if it is a player or card that is not too hot at the moment, 
And if it is a great deal as is, like if I just see it like, damn, that is cheap, that is on sale, everything looks good, I'll just buy it right then and there because if it's that good of a deal, then others will scoop it up within a couple hours. So I always have to play that game. But what's nice is as a seller, you can put your own threshold of offers that you can receive, a lot like eBay. So if you don't want anything under 80%, then that could be your threshold. If you wanna automatically accept offers at 92% or 95%, you could do that as well. But the goal is to eliminate all of the lowball offers if you don't want it, and just to save you a lot of time and effort. Also in terms of selling, remember a lot of the listings on Comp C also get transferred over to eBay, but if you're on eBay, it looks like a lot more money because it is. So that exact same card will cost that eBay buyer more. But the good news is that you don't get charged Comp C's uh, fees as well as eBay's. It's only Comp C's fees. So I think that they make their money from that markup on eBay so you don't have to pay for that. So uh, I like the fact that they're linked to eBay because I've noticed about a fourth of my sales have been from eBay buyers, which really helps. Um, if not, I'd have a fourth less of sales. But also what's nice is I've only had about two returns uh, of, of over a 500 sales from Comp C. And I know with eBay, if you just directly sell on eBay, you'll probably get requested to refund or return items a lot more frequently than I have. Something else worth noting is that Comp C does not have an app for the phone right now, but as long as you have something newer than an iPhone 2, <coughs> fantasy football card crash. <laughs> Sorry, COVID's insane. As long as you have a phone that's newer, it's very easy to navigate Comp C. Um, I've, had, I've had no issues using my iPhone um, 11 on Comp C, and it's great because if you sell a card right away, then you could list another one, or if you just receive breaking news of a trade or an injury or, or a signing, you can go on and search cards very easily and then just buy directly from your phone. As I see it, Comp C is just a great way for you to get your feet wet in the hobby and just familiar with all these cards while also learning about supply and demand as it actually happens. And uh, you know, if you watch my other video on what sports cards to buy, one of the biggest tips I had was for three weeks, just don't spend a penny on cards. Just learn everything you can. And that is why I just recommend you putting that $10 in just to get the history points to learn about what cards are actually selling and at what price versus what you think they would sell for based on eye appeal or anything else. It's literally like training camp for the hobby. And if you're familiar with Spartan history, their warrior creed is, he who sweats more in training bleeds less in war. And that sounds a million times more badass than collecting rectangles of paper and foil of athletes, but you get the point. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how I use Comp C as well as how I did my first shipment to them, check out this video up here and I'll see you over there.